We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today, we are going to be talking about my predictions for the 2020 Basel World. Of course, it's the yearly or the annual World Watch Fair, soon to not be Watch Fair, in my opinion, which I will get into. And I know that sounds a bit drastic, but I think that's the direction we're going with some of these Watch Fairs. But nonetheless, guys, thank you so much for coming back once again. I really do appreciate it. Please do not forget to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. It really does go a whole long way in terms of the YouTube algorithm, which is getting a little bit janky in modern times. I will say and of course you can check us out at delraywatch.com where we have a bunch of really cool stuff including what's on my wrist this Gerard Perigo carbon fiber dial Ferrari chronograph. I know that's a lot of a mouthful, but actually I think that's going to be one of the themes we're going to be seeing at this year's Basel World Fair, which I will talk about it. So let's jump right into my predictions. I'm going to talk about some themes that I think are going to be happening at this year's Basel World Fair, as well as some specifics from some of the brands. I have uh, some predictions specifically for Rolex and Tudor at the end, so make sure to stick all the way through the end because I think that uh, I have some interesting findings, especially with Tudor. So right away, I think on my on the list first here, I have blue dials, right? Last year, blue dials was a theme. The year before, blue dials was also a theme. Perfect example is when you have the Langa Odysseus, their sports watch or their foray into that kind of integrated look category. You have the blue dial. Everyone's doing it. I think you're going to see a lot of the brands put a lot more blue, the color blue, in their watches. So everything from Zenith, Hublot, and maybe even Tudor, we're going to be seeing blue. I think it's a little bit too much at this point. It's just a color, in my opinion, and there shouldn't be this much focus on that color when you can literally pick any other color, but it seems like the market responds very well to blue and they need to sell watches. So they need to sell what people are buying. So blue is going to be a theme, of course, no doubt about it. Integrated bracelets is also going to be a theme. You see it even from brands that only produce sports um, dr dress watches. Rather, you see it from H Moser to give an example. They just released this the, um, the Streamliner Flyback, and essentially that's their integrated bracelet Flyback Chronograph sports watch. And from Moser, which I love Moser, I own a Moser in white gold, a dress watch, a smaller um, size dress watch. I think it's a little bit interesting. But they're jumping into that space as well. Everyone wants integrated or integrated seeming sports watches, even from brands that are known for their dress watches and people buy them for their dress watches. So we're going to see things like integrated bracelets, probably. Um, even looking at last year's Tudor P01, which I'm also going to touch on, the strap slash the way that the, the end links for the strap kind of create that integrated look. It's just a theme, it's trending, and it's here to stay. I think as, as many of you are disappointed about this to see more people jumping on that bandwagon, it's definitely here to stay, I think, at least for this year, 2020. Jumping into this next theme, I think there's going to be a whole lot of rubber. Going into the bracelets and the sports watches, you see a lot of brands getting into rubber straps. You see it even from third-party manufacturers of rubber straps. There are so many rubber strap manufacturers out there, especially when they started producing straps and rubber bands for brands that don't have them for those models. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more factory rubber options for some brands and they might not necessarily be releasing these things as accessories as Basel World but I think we'll probably see the watches on more rubber straps at this Basel 2020 and into the future. Now taking a bit of a break before I go into brand specifics if you go to the Basel World website, you'll notice a few things. The first thing you're going to notice is that there's a lot less of a focus on watches. I did a previous video about the end of Basel World, and other people have touched on this, including a lot of real news sources out there. And what we see in luxury goods and goods in general is more people are purchasing experiences, travel, luxury experiences, and not necessarily going just for the goods. It's more about the whole approach, the holistic approach to it, to where you're getting the experience, 
Maybe you buy an item, maybe you have the item already, and you can have high-end food. You can see interesting things happen for you, different displays, different panels, and it's not just focused generally on watches anymore. So you go to the website, check it out, you see they talk about food and travel and accommodations way more than the Basel World website talks about watches. So that's where they're focusing on, and that's where you see a lot of the other, you know, watches and wonders, you know, Dubai Watch Week, so on and so forth. You see them going into more experiences. Look at things like the Monaco Grand Prix, right? There's so much surrounding that, so many social events, and not necessarily just going for the races. A lot of other things that kind of contribute and ancillary things that come along with that. So more experience driven, that's where we see Basel. And so when we when we talk about some of these things, I think going into the future, we're, we're going to see a lot less impressive releases coming from Basel World. For example, Hublot announced that over 50% of their new releases or modifications to their watches are going to be out on their website and in the market before Basel World. And considering Hublot and LVMH might be pulling out next year because they're making their own event in their own whole thing, I think we'll see a lot less impressive releases waiting for Basel and more just things trickling out on the internet as time goes on because in the age of the internet, everything needs to be instantaneous and I see it in the comments below. So please do not forget to leave your comments there. Let's jump into brand specifics. Show part, you're gonna see more rubber out of them. Day one, they had the tire themed rubber strap. Chopard's really going into sports watches. They have so many beautiful dress watches, including the LUC line, but people are buying sports watches and that's where they're going. We're going to see more carbon fiber out of them and more bright and colorful dial configurations. You see it with their Mia Mia line. There's just more colors, reds, yellows, brights, fluorescence, and of course, more carbon fiber like I have on the wrist. And I went out of the way to put a carbon fiber uh, dial watch on the wrist. So that's where Chopard's going. Tudor, I don't think we're going to see anything really out of Tudor this year. Now, I know that's a little bit surprising, but let me explain myself. Last year, there was a big flop with Tudor. You had the P01, the whole watch community thought there was going to be a Tudor Submariner. You had every watch collector ready refreshing that page so they could see that Tudor Submariner and what do they get? They get this really weird prototype inspired watch that some people thought was kind of charming and interesting, had a nice story, but a lot of people were just like, you know, that's just not what we want. So Tudor, I think they're a little bit hesitant. If you go to the Tudor website, it's a great example of what's to come. And you look on the website, they're pushing that P01. I think we'll see a lot more focus on the P01. Maybe they'll put it on a rubber strap or band like you see some of the other bracelets and some of the other uh, themes that we have here in watches today. Maybe they'll put it on rubber to kind of make it appeal more towards, towards watch guys. But try to find the Black Bay 58 and try to find the Black Bay GMT on Tudor's website. You can't find it. They make you work so hard to find those two watches and those are the Tudor watches that everyone wants. And I say everyone by the diehard Tudor fans and collectors. They make you work for it. So they're really starting to de-emphasize what's hot and push these other things in your face. I can't really blame them. But at the same time, I don't think that they're quite yet ready to make any big steps after last year's flop. I know a lot of Tudor guys also want the GMT to be in the 58 size, a smaller, tapered, more traditional size. I don't think we're going to get it this year, unfortunately, although I would love to see it. Tag Heuer. Teg Hoyer had an also a little bit of a flop with the isograph, some movement issues. It's debatable. There's some speculation. There's a lot of rumors out there, but there's also a lot of evidence. We're going to see Tag Hoyer really unveil properly for the first time the whole um, isograph, which is now just the caliber five Octavia. So moving the Octavia away from chronographs into a time date configuration. We're going to see them focus on that and really push that as their sports watch going into the future, maybe throwing it on a bracelet, putting it in your face and also mixing it with the color blue. Maybe there's a rubber strap involved. That's my theme prediction. Ublo, of course, we're going to see a lot of the same thing. If Ublo is going to be dumping over 50% of their watches in your face before Basel World, we're going to see a lot of what Ublo does. Rubber straps slash strap crocker alligator and some really high-end stuff that looks really nice partnered with cars. That's what's coming from Hublot. 
hands down. We covered uh, Tudor. Now, Rolex. What's going to happen with Rolex? Are things going to be discontinued? People are speculating that the Explorer 2, the large size, is going to be discontinued. I don't know about that. I think that's a model you can actually get if you try to find one. So will they discontinue it? I don't know. I don't think they're quite sold out of their runs of that yet and probably not ready to melt down those watches sitting in inventory um, back at the factory at Rolex. But what I think that they might do just maybe is they might release a Coke bezel in their ceramic lineup and they might start with precious metal in a white gold a lot like they did with the Pepsi. Uh, but then again, I, I'm not too sure about that, right? Last year we had the Batgirl and some other releases. Are they ready for that Coke ceramic release? I think that they need to do that at some point because it is a model in their back catalog that they do need to update at some point and bring into the ceramic lineup. People and third party manufacturers are starting to make third party aftermarket bezels to be Coke, you know, the black and the red bezel instead of um, the, the blue in the red as well as the blue and the black. I think that that's a possibility, but I'm just not yet too sure because once again, I think the whole um, waiting till Basel World to release things and coming out every year with a new grand release is has really been a short run. And if you've looked at Basel World through the years previously, it's not always been as grand of a release as in the last couple of years, a lot of us diehard watch collectors have really come to look forward to. But maybe we'll see that Coke bezel ceramic. I would actually like that a whole lot. Not that you can buy that, right? Because... They're not in stock anywhere, any of the Rolex stainless steel sports models, but can't beat a dead horse. We all know that. So guys, what do you think? I want to hear your predictions in the comments below. What do you think is going to happen? Do you agree with the Rolex? Also, what have you heard? I know there's a lot of guys that get on the forums and go wild with it. So leave in the comments below your findings as well. Please do not forget to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. I'm on Instagram, the real John P where you can see what we do here at delraywatch.com. Thanks, guys. You have been chatting with John P. Ciao.